Right, morning, everyone. Okay, well, as um, Justin probably said, I think this is Patrick Bayar. Well, he's definitely Patrick Bayar, but um, he is the Chief Business Officer for the UK and Ireland at Sky. And we're talking about TV effectiveness with a particular reference to performance today, as well as how you mix that with a nice blend of uh, brand. So welcome, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you very much. So what do you think about 2023? Let's start with that. Well, look, look first, I think, um, I don't know about you guys, but we are happy 22 is coming to an end. <laughs> um, it's been a particularly interesting and, and challenging year. I think 23 is going to be challenging, opaque, and interesting. So let me, uh, let me take each of them one by one. When, when we talk to all our partners, whether it's advertisers or agencies or, or different markets, whether it's um, all the markets that Sky operates in or cousins and brothers at, at NBC and, and Free Will, we know 23 is going to be a challenging year from an advertising standpoint. We know that if I think of the world of advertising between more traditional linear advertising and non-linear advertising, which in the Sky world is VOD, at smart, digital, um, Everything is going to hinge whether or not the nonlinear part of the business is going to continue to grow at the same pace or not. So I'm not going to venture some numbers. I'm, I'm not amazing at crystal ball reading, but we know it's going to be it's going to be a challenging year from that perspective, right? Just look at the cost of living in the UK. Sky is also, as you guys know, a retailer. Sky is in half of the UK homes. If I look at all our products between television, broadband, mobile. Um, we have very advanced analytics capability trying to model what's going to happen to people's disposable income. And we know it's going to be a particularly difficult year. You know, the rest of Europe, Italy, Germany for us may have some caution because the economy is different. Um, but when you put all that into the blender, we know it's going to be a tough year. So that's the challenging part. It's opaque because at the end of the day, um, if I'm brutally honest, we don't really know, right? If I look at the range of forecasts that, that we've seen from different people, there was a very good article um, coming out yesterday from Enders, as always, um, around that. But frankly, we hear anywhere between minus 2 to minus 10, right? And, and I don't want to be a Cassandra around that front, but it, it's opaque, which means that we're going to have to adapt and react throughout the year in the ability to do that, because we don't really know, right? We know that when there's, when there's a recession, Advertising usually amplifies the recession. Like we all have done our econometric modeling around that. 2001, 2002, 2008, 2009. This time, I think it's different. I think it's, we are outside of the range of what we've seen before, and therefore we're gonna, we're gonna have to adapt. That's the opaque part. Now let's talk about the interesting part, because I'm, um, I'm, I'm a natural optimist, um, especially for Saturday night soccer game, by the way, I'm French. <laughs> um, <laughs> So let's talk, about the, um, let's talk about the interesting part. I do think that advertising overall, and TV in particular, has an important role to play in 2003 into helping consumers, because that's what we are for, right? We can talk a lot about tools and, and advanced capabilities. At the end of the day, we're here to help consumers. And if I look across the spectrum of advertising categories, whether it's retail, travel, finance, automotive, each of them have a specific role into helping the consumer through that cost of living crisis, right? Um, retail with some cost of living offering, travel because there's unprecedented demand for travel coming out of the two years of horrendous COVID. Um, and I could go on and on and go through all the, all the categories and, and I'm sure all of you guys, we've done some planning category by category into what's going on. But each category has a story to put together and television has a story to help each of the category doing that. Yeah, so travel would be an obvious one, I guess. Yes. So sort of post-COVID, people just want to get out regardless. Okay, and um, I mean, TV has always been fairly resilient in a recession itself because it's sort of, you know, a cheap entertainment, really, when you compare it to going out to a restaurant. Do you expect it to be the same this time again? Just... So I have a view, which is TV has changed a lot, guys, and I'm sure you all agree, since the last recession. Right? It is not the same TV as it was before um, in terms of capabilities. So in a very simplistic way, I've got two things in mind. One is context, and the other one is demand. Demand because TV is indispensable to drive demand, and demand is what we're all going to need in a cost of living crisis. 
Um, TV drives demand because we all know, and that's what all our market research says, that TV makes any other channel, any other media that works after TV harder and better. So TV is indispensable on the front end of the advertising funnel. The second one is TV has changed a lot, right? And we're going to talk about measurement, but we all have innovated tremendously and invested tremendously since the last recession, right? Whether it's sea flights that um, NBCU created, Sky Enhanced, and now the rest of the UK market and then the European markets are adopting around that um, collaboration with ITV and Channel 4. Innovation that ITV is doing with Planet V, which is a remarkable um, innovation as well. One campaign that Sky is doing, there's been so many innovation on the agency side as well, to be able to link basically the demand side of things to the outcome and the attribution side of things together. TV is now at a point where not for all products, but for many products, is being able to straddle between brand and performance. And, and I, think that, I think that has changed since 2008, 2009. The second one is context, guys. Um, and obviously, I work in television, so by definition, I over-rotate on, on context, and I'm going to preach for my own chapel in that one. But at the end of the day, if you look at a cost of living crisis, right? Household with less than 20 to 30,000 pounds, uh, I'm using pounds, I could use euros, of disposable income are going to see through the cost of living crisis, so cost of living, energy, mortgage, their disposable income literally reduce, be divided by four, three to four in that process, which means television and the home becomes a central place for entertainment going forward, right? We've done tons of market research on that front, right? Restaurants are going to get cut. Going to the movies has a risk of being cut as well, right? Television is going to be a place where people are going to rally, convene together as a family. And therefore, context is going to be even more important than it was before. I, I strongly believe that. OK. And if we just drill down in some of these tools, I mean, you mentioned C-Flight addressable. Um, I mean, C-Flight, that obviously provides you with a deduplicated reach at household level. Now, I believe you're now ingesting that data into an optimised planning tool that can give you the sort of ideal media mix for a total TV campaign. I mean, just tell us about that quickly. Look, the, the idea was, was simple when we started thinking about that in 2019 before the pandemic. And in some ways, the pandemic has slowed down um, us a little bit, as everyone, normal. But the whole idea was being able to offer agencies and advertisers the ability to have truly um, deduplicated reach between the different form of advertising that Skype provides, but also that our um, friends at ITV and Channel 4 provide um, in the UK market. So linear TV. BVOD, digital, at smart as well, and be able to offer agencies and advertisers the ability to plan the campaign um, across all those, um, all those channels. All the channels, um, audited, very important, as you guys know, second by second, very important, and the ability to do some real-time planning so that you can change your, your planning in flight as you see the data coming back, which we think is important. And we're going to continue to refine that, right? It's a huge investment on our part. It's a big part of our, of our, of our CapEx investment. Um, we're blessed that, that ITV and Channel 4 have embraced that as well. Um, and, and we see that really as an, industry, as an industry tool. OK, and that could be used to optimize reach, but later you will use that to optimize outcomes as well, business outcomes. Yeah, so let me, I, I'm, I'm going to name one advertiser, but I could name, I could name 100 of those. Um, we are doing a lot of things in terms of leaking um, what's going on on TV in terms of advertising spend in terms of the outcome of what um, different segments are doing. Obviously, it has to be, um, it's obvious to everyone in the room, GDPR compliant and, and with all the right um, safety and protections that, that TV provides. But we're doing something very interesting now for a couple of years, for instance, with, um, with Amazon, as surprising as it sounds, where we, um, we link the advertising on television to the outcome in terms of e-commerce, in terms of what's going on there. Um, and, and that's a tool that I help them optimize how much money they put on TV, how much and when do they put that money on TV. Okay. It doesn't go down to individual level for all those GDPR reasons, um, but it's incredibly powerful in terms of campaign optimization. Okay, now I'm going to open up to audience questions in a minute, but first I just want to talk about Sky Glass and Sky Stream. So if anyone doesn't know, Sky Glass is basically Sky's next generation platform. 
It happens to be in a TV right now, but they've also now bought it out inside a small set-top box, like one of those classic streamer boxes. And that's a whole new sort of UX and OS. Um, now, in terms of the user experience, a big part of that was trying to unify the content discovery so that content from all the apps appears nice and sort of integrated. You've also tried to do what you can on the advertising consumer experience and make them a bit more immersive, less interruptive. I mean, just talk us through that. So this is where I put my sales hat on um, in, terms of, in terms of Sky and Skyglass. Um, so look, I think it's an amazing product, right? Um, we've decided a few years back that it was indispensable to really be the centerpiece, I'm trying to find a Sky and Glass somewhere, be the centerpiece of a consumer home, right? And the whole idea was to own the HDMI zero behind that. And we've built a product that has basically all in one place easy, in terms of content discovery, content merchandising, and content consumption, right? But the gist about it is not just the, the beauty of the TV or the business model. You know, we, we, um, we sell Skyglass sky on the CCA, the same way you, you get an iPhone. The gist of it is, is the product from a tech standpoint and the data that's behind it, right? So you're able to search every content anywhere across any of the content providers. Um, you've got resume points. Um, it's a very, very unique consumer experience. The benefit of it, um, and by the way, Skystream is the same interface without a television. Um, it's just an IP puck. The benefit of it is that 100% of your advertising is targeted, right? And, and that is massive from an innovation standpoint, right? Because there are a lot of things you can do in terms of attribution. The next generation, as you guys know, because we started to tee that up, is we're going to launch next year what we call um, a new version of Sky, of Sky Glass um, with a camera, which opens the ability to do a lot of things, right? Opens the ability to do um, co-watching together, football game, movie. Um, some of the streamers are doing that um, today. Um, the other one is uh, the ability to do um, video calling in your living room, 4K, amazing quality. A lot of things related to health, you know, imagine yoga with posture correction. The camera is 4K with, with some RDKs in there. Um, and then the next step is, as soon as you have a camera, you have a lot more data. Obviously, fully GDPR compliant. Obviously, I joked around it, but with 28 level of opt-ins um, to make sure it's, it's, really, um, it's really working well for everyone. But it could we think it's gonna take advertising one step further. So this to show sure. who's in front of the TV or how many people. And what do they want? What do they want to see in terms of that? Yeah, okay. And obviously it's worth emphasizing that if it's a sky home, the sky glass or sky stream only, it's an IP home, basically it's a streaming home. So we're in the all IP domain by that point. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Have we got any audience questions? We've got time for two. Okay, there's a gentleman over there. If you just wait for the microphone, please, and then just let us know where you're from. <coughs> it's coming down. Teamwork right there. Um, <laughs> firstly, I, I'm also an optimist. I think England will win on Saturday. Um, <laughs> secondly, um, since being here, kind of hearing numbers about linear TV across December, Jan, maybe back, minus 20, minus 30 for some of the free to air networks, hearing the same thing from Australia in the last 24 hours, I, we've got a personal view that I think there's a structural change coming through on the linear side in 2023 is going to be a watershed year. I don't think it's economically led. Do you agree? I, I look, I have, I have a view that linear is going to be a bit more resilient than we think it is. Um, and I'm a little bit influenced by one thing, which is the quality of the content that all the big linear players are going to keep putting on screen. Um, if I look at the UK market, I think if I take the combined uh, content investment of the BBC, ITV, and Channel 4, um, it's going to continue to be very high, and some of the content they're putting on screen is absolutely spectacular. Um, and at the end of the day, I think that's what drives um, the viewership. Now, I think you've got a point where we need to modulate that answer between under 40, 35 and above 35. Um, obviously, I'm a little bit biased because of the Sky audience towards the um, above 35. Um, so I think you might be right on under 35, uh, and we've seen some of the catch-up or acceleration of that post-COVID. I do think above 35, we're going to see more resilience than some people think. 
OK, we are out of time, I'm afraid. So, um, sorry it couldn't be longer, but thank you, Patrick. That's brilliant. Thank you so much, James. <laughs>